Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today. Let me just declare first of all that I am sick. So I've got this kind of weird manly kind of sexy maybe voice going on. I have the crud, the head and chest crud, not the flu though. So I'm actually pretty excited about that. And the deal is that I have never missed posting a video on Friday in almost two years and I am not going to let this crud ruin my record. And so if you bear with me, I will probably have to stop filming like two dozen times so that I can blow my nose. But I've got my tissues, I've got some coffee so that I can lubricate my throat. I've also got my Bobbi Brown foundation touch-up stick because every time I blow my nose, I will look like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. But I will not be defeated and my record will remain intact. So I I just posted last week my best of beauty um, makeup products for 2016 and I decided that I wanted to go ahead and start talking about my hair skin and face products as well for 2016 so that's what we'll be talking about today I'm gonna start with my hair and skin favorites because I don't have a lot of all of those and I'll end on kind of my favorite face you know, skincare products at the very end because I have a ton of those. Definitely go check out my makeup favorites. That was really fun to film. It was nice to relive um, kind of all of the products that really made me happy last year. So let me get into my hair favorites from this past year. And some of them are so random that it's kind of entertaining. So first of all, I've mentioned before that I love the original serum form formula by Frizzies. Um, it's meant to be used on your hair when it's wet so that you prevent the flyaways and basically the frizz. I also use this on my ends when my hair is dry because it's a really good um, kind of hair tamer, bring my hair back to life, especially if I haven't washed it for a couple of days. Um, I had been using, when it comes to dry shampoo, I had been using um, the one by Batiste, and I really think that's the best oil absorbing one, but I really um, have become a tremendous fan now of the one by Pantene, um, their Pro-V dry shampoo. Um, it doesn't do as good a job of absorbing the oil as the one by Batiste does. Um, and by the way, I'm not interested in spending a lot of money on a dry shampoo because I use so much of it. I have very oily hair and I require a tremendous amount of dry shampoo in order to not have to wash it every day. And so if my dry shampoo was expensive, I would need a loan from the bank in order to keep up with it. So I started using the one by Pantene and not the one by Batiste anymore because the one by Batiste has the most intense white cast and it was starting to I don't know, like give me dandruffy looking kind of like flakes. And I know that that was the powder. Um, so the one by Pantene really does not have a white cast at all. Um, and so it was able to, you know, kind of dry out my scalp a little bit and the oiliness at my roots. But also I'm now able to use it as a texturizer during the day for my styling because I'm not concerned about it also adding kind of that white cast. And of course it comes from the drugstore so it's really affordable the one that was random that i was kind of referencing is the shampoo and conditioner that i use now these come from costco they are the kirkland brand just straight up normal generic um moisture shampoo and moisture conditioner now the reason i came into absolutely loving a brand by kirkland which is the brand of costco I had decided that I needed to step away from sulfate shampoos because I learned that the sulfate is what not only gives your shampoo the bubbliness, but also is kind of what is harsh on your hair and kind of dries it out. So I'm like, okay, I need to find some sulfate free shampoos. And so I was doing all of this research and gathering this information and I hadn't quite settled on the one that I was going to go for. And so when I was in Costco, I came across that shampoo and conditioner and they are both sulfate free. They're like eight and $10 a bottle. Like this is like, they're almost 34 ounces of product for like $10 or less. One is eight, one is 10. I forget which, but, um, it is sulfate free, which is what caught my attention. They're also a hundred percent vegan, paraben free and gluten free. So all that freeness just led me to believe that they were going to be really good things for my hair. And it was something for me to use in the meantime until I found the one, because really, from Kirkland and Costco, how could that be such a primo shampoo and conditioner? I have not gone back since. They are just phenomenal. They smell very nice, actually also, which is what I also enjoy, but the shampoo is luxurious and sulfate free, so I'm not even sure how they do that. The conditioner is rich and thick and really makes my hair feel amazing. And so the pricing, 
combined with the lack of ingredients that are also bad and the fact that it performs so well, I live and die by that shampoo and conditioner now, which was a complete surprise. By the way, I forgot to just mention or like ask of you to just excuse this hair situation that we have going on. <laughs> I barely had enough energy to put my makeup on today. And so the idea of doing my hair just wasn't happening. And so we're gonna give this a pass for today. <laughs> That's okay. All right, let me talk about some of my favorite skin products, two from the shower, and then just a couple of lotions that I wanna call out. Um, and so I've talked before a number of times, no surprise. Um, I love the new in shower lotions. It was actually one of the first videos I ever made was comparing some of the brand new um, in shower lotions. So to date, I really love the one by Nivea, and I like the one that's kind of in the middle. There's a mild, a moderate and then a heavy duty like lotionizing lotion in the shower. I like the one that's for dry skin because I feel like it's thick but not too thick. My major problem with the thickest one, which is what I thought I needed, was that it's so thick it's hard to come out of the bottle. And so I love the in shower lotion just for normal, middle of the road, dry skin. Um, I also love by Nivea, I guess. I'm loving Nivea shower stuff. Um, is there... Um, moisturizing body wash you'll also see it listed as a body cream um when this rinses off i feel like i've just applied lotion to my body so i've cleaned myself but i feel like it also just adds some really nice moisturization i like the one called care and coconut because it smells like coconut but there's a wide variety of scents plus it's super cheap and so you really feel like you can use a lot and get yourself all lathered up and having a really good time in the shower for not a lot of money at all just a couple lotions that i want to mention because i'm very picky when it comes to lotion i don't like when they're too tacky i don't like when they don't blend in well i have to have a really good smell with it so um i love by the healthy body the healthy body butter by la vanilla um, this is the flavor pure vanilla um, and so I love these lotions they're really thick and rich they blend in nicely but I just love the scents too there's a there's a whole range of scents as well and I really like the vanilla one I like the other ones as well I will go and try some of those other ones but this is kind of my I just default to this a lot which is what made me decide it was one of my favorites from last year um, another one whose scent that I really love is by Marrakesh it's the argon and hemp oil therapy hand and body lotion this is a little bit of a thinner lotion so it blends in a little bit quicker but still provides really adequate moisturization I love the scent this is the original scent um, it's really hard to describe um, it smells nope not even gonna try to not even gonna try to describe it it just has the most original it's not a flower it's not citrus it's not vanilla it's none of those things it's just it's like a it's a it's a woodsy or just kind of I don't know I'm not gonna describe it but I love the lotion and so if you're daring and want to buy a lotion that you've never smelled before then definitely check that out um, they're not entirely cheap and I promise you you will either love or hate that scent of the lotion but it's just so unique to me that I just really wanted to mention it when my skin is grumpy or when I don't really want something that's got a scent to it especially if I'm trying to really treat something um, I've really been loving by Aveeno the active natural skin relief overnight cream um, and so this is really that's dermatologist recommended meant to be therapeutic super extra dry skin even though it's a night cream and implies that it's going to be really thick and that I assume would be hard to blend in it actually blends in so nicely and literally like by the next day I feel like I've had like a hand or foot or elbow or you know leg treatment because it really does just so intensely moisturize plus it's unscented again so if my skin is extra grumpy for that minute or whatever that like month um it winds up just i just know i'm not adding anything else to aggravate my skin because it's just kind of a natural really thick and rich lotion i swear i think i need to talk to you guys like all day because now that i've been talking i haven't had to blow my nose so much this is very exciting how about a four hour favorites video everyone any takers on that Okay, so let's move into some of my favorite skincare products now. Um, let me talk about a couple of masks. I definitely favor charcoal masks because I'm interested in kind of cleaning out my pores. I will tend to have large pores if they get a little bit clogged. And so I definitely like to make sure that they're cleaned out um, as much and enough. 
Um, on the higher end of the range, I love the um, charcoal mask by Bosha. Basha. Bosha. I'm going to call it Bosha. It is the charcoal pour pudding. So it comes in this black and white stripe, which reminds me of Sephora, which I love. Um, it winds up looking kind of funny inside once you start using it. Um, I use a foundation brush to apply it. Actually, I use a foundation brush to apply all of my masks, by the way, because I don't want it getting into my cuticles and under my nails and stuff. But anyway, I love this is kind of like um, the creamiest charcoal mask that I can use. Um, and charcoal being one of those ingredients that winds up being able to kind of purify and clean out your pores. Um, and so I just, I really like this one because it's, it's fancy and I don't use it all the time, but, um, again, it's one of the creamier charcoal masks that I've used. And so it just kind of glides on very smoothly and I like it for that. Another charcoal mask that I like is by Biore. Um, this is the self heating mask though. And this is just awesome. This, the moment it contacts your skin, you feel some heat, literally heat. It's not even that it's warm. You feel some heat um, and you wind up blending it in and rubbing it in for about a minute and rinse it clean. But I like the idea and the presence of the heat because I feel like that just kind of opens your pores a little bit. And so you kind of get a deeper get in there sort of a cleaning situation. I also like from the drugstore, not as expensive as the Bosha mask um, or all of the Freeman masks. Um, there's a wide variety of them. There's a charcoal and um, sugar facial mask now. This one is the Dead Sea Minerals mask. It's got some nutrients and sea salt in it and it's it's also meant to clear out your pores but they're just super affordable um, and I love the wide variety of masks they have I also love by Sephora all of their sheet masks I use all of them this one happens to be the pearl mask which is kind of a, a brightening sort of mask but they they attack a whole bunch of different um, skin issues and I just enjoy and love all of them and so that's my mask situation let me talk about a couple of lip treatments that I've been enjoying enjoying um, by elf they have the um, lip exfoliator and this one happens to come in what looks like a lipstick bullet um, I've used other lip scrubs but they're always in like a little jar and I I just it's not as easy to um, kind of dip into a jar as it is to use what looks like a little lipstick and so what's great about this is um, it's got the sugar scrub that's been molded into you know shape and so you're able to very precisely go after like your cupid's bow without going around the outside of your lip because then you just wind up irritating the skin around your lip and if you're exfoliating your lips to begin with you want to be as precise as possible to remove just kind of the chapped skin and just kind of the dead skin it really does refresh your lips very nicely um so that's like super cheap so when you buy that for like three dollars or four dollars i think you need to then you can counterbalance your purchase of the bite beauty agave lip mask which is almost thirty dollars for this tiny little tube but let me tell you i don't know what's in here well i know that natural ingredients are in here but I put this on at night and my lips have been reborn by the next day. There is just something about the ingredients here. It works. Vaseline is not comparable to it. Vaseline or Aquaphor even, they don't do the same. I don't know why, but they just don't. And so I very sparingly use this. A little goes a long way. It is expensive totally worth it when it comes to cleaning my skin um, I still to this day use by Neutrogena the hydrating eye makeup remover lotion I definitely prefer a lotion over any of the cleansing oils or anything when it comes to my eye um, I find that this stays out of my eyes yet still does a really good job of removing all kinds of different mascara whether it's waterproof or not um, it doesn't irritate my eyes and I've been using it for a really long time. Rue the day they decide to discontinue that. You will see me crying. I love two products from Simple. I am still using the Simple Micellar Water. I find that this winds up cleaning my skin while adding hydration and does not dry it out. I hate, even though I've got oily skin, I hate when you use a cleanser and your face feels tight afterwards. That is not friendly to my, my face and my skin. When it feels tight, that seems like a very bad sign, which is also why I love using by Simple as well, and I've tried a wide variety of them. Um, this is a hydrating cleansing oil. This is awesome to cut your makeup kind of as a step one and then I go in and I cleanse afterwards with the micellar water but this definitely cuts the makeup no matter what kind of long wearing makeup that you're trying to keep on all day and then on the spot need to take off at the end
end of the day. So you need something pretty heavy duty in order to get in there and, and, and take it off. So my cleaning really is two steps, but both of them are moisturizing. A cleansing oil as well as the micellar water keeps my skin, I feel, in balance. I've really been into treating my skin this last year. I posted a video specifically about what are serums, um, and I've definitely incorporated serums now into my kind of daily routine. My favorite serum, and I've actually, this is not my first bottle, is by Ula Henriksen, the Truth Serum Collagen Booster. So it's orange. Um, if you can see it through the bottle, it's orange because it's got vitamin C in it. And I will just highlight that vitamin C is like the most major serum ingredient that you can apply to your skin, I find. Vitamin C helps build collagen, which is what, you know, keeps our skin looking full and supple and not wrinkly and um, kind of fine liney. But also vitamin C is super valuable when it comes to, it's a, it comes to being an antioxidant. An antioxidant is what helps prevent free radicals. Free radicals are what damage your skin cells. And so we definitely want an antioxidant and vitamin C winds up dealing with both of those. I've tried some other vitamin C based ones. The one by um, Drunk Elephant smells like the dentist office and so I can't tolerate that. And so I definitely love that serum. Personally, I use Retin-A straight from the dermatologist um, prescription. Retin-A is definitely um, a really valuable skin ingredient because it winds up promoting skin turnover so that you are constantly regrowing brand new cells, keeps them nice and healthy, also removes like the kind of top layer of dead skin. Whether you get Retin-A alone um, or find it within any of your um, other sorts of skin products, whether it be in a serum or a moisturizer, Retin-A is definitely very important and it's something that I'm going to be sure to be continuing to use. I like to also treat my skin with a facial oil, particularly around my nose and mouth, which is going to be super critical right now because I keep having to blow my nose um, and that immediately dries it out. I love the one by Tarte, the maracuja oil. Um, I like this maracuja oil in particular because it's a thinner oil, like the argan oils that I've used. Um, seem to be a little bit thicker. Um, and so I like how this one is thin and blends in just very nicely and very easily. I kind of imagine that it's able to absorb into my skin a little bit better. Just a couple more things to round out this collection. When it comes to kind of moisturizing my face, um, I started using this year by It Cosmetics, the Bye Bye Under Eye Eye Cream. I love, by the way, that it's kind of um, kind of a very pale blue in color. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, you can totally see that. Um, and so the eye creams I had been using previously had been a little bit more like liquidy and fluid. This guy is thick. This one I really feel like has to be doing major work because it just, um, it's just one of the thicker ones that I've used. Plus I like that the ingredients that are in it, um, both smooth, brighten, and depuff. And those are like the top three eye complaints that you have. And so, um, I've definitely been enjoying this and I'm looking forward to exploring some of the other um, products by It Cosmetics beyond just her makeup line because I'm really impressed with that as an eye cream. From the drugstore, ironically or amazingly, when it comes to moisturizing my face at night, I love by CeraVe the Skin Renewing Night Cream. This stuff has like major like vitamins and nutrients in it. So first of all though, let me say it's non-greasy, it's thick, and rich and by the next day my my face has never felt so good after using a moisturizer and that's what makes me call this out as one of my favorite products because i literally can feel the difference with it it also has hyaluronic acid in it which is a moisturizer it's got this thing called collarin in it which um, helps build up your skin and deals with like fine lines and helps promote like collagen growth, which is what keeps our skin looking nice and smooth. It also has ceramides and niacinamide in it, which help build your skin, um, particularly the skin barrier, which we're always trying to make sure is in a happy, healthy state. And so tons of vitamins and nutrients in here to do all really sorts of fabulous things for your skin. But then also, like I said, it just feels fabulous after I use it. The last thing I wanna talk about has been around probably forever. Um, and this is, you don't have to be brand specific, but I use whenever my skin is unhappy, like if I've over treated it or over masked it, or it's dry from the wind or the cold, or it's just unhappy, I go in with aloe. Now this happens to be a brand called Lily of the Desert. I got it on Amazon. It's an organic, um, 
aloe. Uh, it just, aloe is like the be all end all when it comes to just kind of treating your skin. And I find that when I apply it at night, when, like I said, I've got some grumpy skin, um, it just, it calms it and it soothes it and it just makes my skin feel better. Um, a little bit moisturized, but I don't use it as a moisturizer. I guess you could, but I don't use it as a moisturizer. I use it as just kind of a a skin calmer and uh, I just wanted to put that out there because it's something that's so basic that like goes back in time from the aloe vera plant and stuff and so I don't have a, I don't have a plant I'd probably kill it I kill most plants and so the fact that it comes in a jar is super convenient so those are my hair skin and face favorites um, for 2016. Thank you again for spending all of this time with me. I will link that Best in Beauty makeup video. Definitely check that out if you have a few other minutes. That original video, by the way, was like 45 minutes. And somehow I was able to knock it down to 25. Thank you to everybody who said you would have been willing to watch the 45 minute one. That really made me laugh and made me feel really good. So if you like this particular video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And I invite you to be one of my subscribers. I work really hard on my channel and I would love to let you see my videos when they go up. What are some of your favorite products from this past year? Please leave me a comment down below or if you've got a video suggestion for me, I am always open to those as well. I hope you have a great 2017. I hope you have a fabulous rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you next time and in the meantime, thanks. <coughs> that was pretty. It also has ceramides and niacinamide in it, which are other just fabulous face nutrients that wind up being able to just... I have no idea. <laughs> I totally forgot what they do.